Hi everyone, it's Bobby at the Paper Jungle. I have a new project for you. This is my April design team project for Country Craft Creations. Uh, what I had was the Echo Park Spring Fling. And I don't have very much of it left. But I'll show you what I've got. I have some of the cut aparts. They are so cute. And I'm going to try to make one more small project. But I've only got two sheets. I love that floral. It's so bright and cheery. And then I have this one with the kites and the galoshes. I have a few stickers. Really, really cute. I have... This is what's left of my paper collection. These small pieces. But I think I can do something with it. I have a project in mind. And then I have... all these um, ephemera. I did get the ephemera pack. They had some really cute stuff in there. Really, really cute. So, I'm going to try to make a project with that. But let me show you what I have so far. Oh, and also she did send me all of this ribbon. I have pink, gray, and yellow. And then I had some of this kind of a teal color left from another collection she sent that I had left over so I can use that as well because it matches the paper collection I don't throw any of that away because it's too pretty so here is my project this is a box there's two projects here actually this box has a magnet right here under the flower it opens like this isn't that cute the album has a tie on it and it kind of hangs out. So we have the plaid on the side. I have the kites on the back and I did double mat the back because it was white on white and it just didn't show up very good. And there's the opposite side. So I just made a collage of some of the stickers and I backed them on the, um, oh, what's the name of it? The Spectrum cardstock. She sent me pink, the gold, and the teal. So I used all of it. I mean, I used a ton of paper on this, but it was, it's just so cute. I really like this project. So anyway, the box opens like this. <clears throat> and there's a tuck spot up here. I don't have anything in it yet, but it'll hold quite a bit. I'll put some more in here. So that is there. And then the bottom opens this way. I don't have anything in the bottom. And my album just sits inside. Now there will be two tutorials, one for the box and one for the uh, album, the folio. And this is with a uh, medium weight chipboard. No, I'm sorry, lightweight chipboard. And you, look how sturdy it is. I mean, it's really nice box. So there's that. Whoops. And here's my little folio. Isn't that cute? I just love it. You know, I love the fall uh, line when it comes out. And I, Christmas is my favorite holiday. But by the time those are over, we're ready for bright, cheery, springy colors. So this one just really hit the mark. I used one of the die cuts here. Um, or one of the cut aparts. This was one of the stickers. And then these little pieces I cut out of the Spectrum paper. Uh, with dies that I had in my stash. So, my little, and the spine is also the gingham, and on the back, I didn't want to leave the back untouched, so I put a little pocket there, and it opens like this, and I actually put a cut in the paper so I could hide the, the uh, flap, and it has a magnet in it. So you can put all kinds of little things in here. Let me see what I've got. I've got a little piece one of those um, little journaling spots and I've got some other dies cut cut apart so you can put that in there I don't want to, this um, little journaling spots kind of small for that I don't want it to get lost down in there so I'm gonna pull it back up a little bit so okay um, so here is my album when you open it, 
uh, the right and the left side are a mirror of each other. Opens like this with a ribbon. And this is four pages, but I stair-stepped them so that um, I could use the paper in a graduated, and I just love the way that turned out. It says spring is here, and it opens this way, and all kinds of room for pictures and journaling on these four pages. This one says um, it's the little things in life, the butterfly paper, there's that pretty floral, and then the gold spectrum, and it says you make me happy. This one says celebrate today and it's a loose tuck spot with more of the butterflies. So the butterfly page is a pocket. And I just have one cut apart in there. Today is a beautiful day to smile. And that's with the spectrum paper on the back. Then when you flip it over you have a double photo mat. And then we have a four pocket page. So there's two cut a parts in there, two more there, two here, or no, one there, and two in the back, two of the large ones. So you can see those cut aparts are just adorable, but that is your four pocket page. And it's kind of, um, I wanted it to be similar to Tammy's lay flat pocket, but I wanted to give it um, more room so I could get more in it. So. That's why it's made this way. So there's that. Here's this one. And here's this one. So it just closes up. And we tie it back. And then we untie the other side. <coughs> And again, it's four pages stair-stepped. This one says, The first blooms of spring always make my heart sing. Isn't that pretty? I hope I'm still in frame. I'm trying to make sure I stay in frame. I may have been out of frame before. I hope not. There is the inside of that page. Yeah, I should be okay. And there's the next one. This is another tuck spot. It says Spring Fling, and that's the name of the paper pad. This one says, I was made for sunny days. Huh. This was my favorite paper of the whole pack. I just love these colors in there. And then this is uh -huh, the cutest floral. And I fussy cut this little um, kite out of the paper. And then this one is loose as well, so that you can tuck something behind the little flowers. This is another pocket, and I have two cut aparts in there. The first blooms of, heart, of spring always make my heart sing. I think that's so cute. And then on the back side, we have another double photo mat, and it's loose at the top and at the bottom. And then we have a waterfall, and it's also graduated like these pages so that it continues all the way down. And I just have a half inch strip on each one. So that is my little folio. I thought it turned out so cute. I just really like it. But I love doing this to the pages. I think it looks really cool. So that's it guys. Uh, I will, I have my cut list made. I will post that. And I'm going to do the tutorial separate uh, so that you don't have to sit through the whole thing. So there will be um, the walkthrough with uh, one tutorial, and then there will be a second video for the second tutorial. So the box will be with by itself, and the um, album will be another one. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think, and I will see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. All right, the first thing we need to build this box is our 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. And I have the artisan white. I wasn't sure if it was white or cream under these lights, but it's white. And what I did was I had 
drawn several lines because of the odd shapes of this. I wanted to make sure I got it uh, started out square. And I'd first drawn a line down here. And it was going to make it difficult to get this exactly one inch. So I started at this corner because that's where there is a complete flat edge to follow. So I have a one inch line here and a one inch line down here. And then I placed my pieces. Now if you want the slant in your box to be on the right on the left hand side when you open the box, you need to flip it to the right. If you put it on the right, the slant here, then when you open the box lid, your slant's gonna be if you have it facing the left, it'll be on the right, and vice versa. I want mine to be on the left, so I cut it this way. So what I'm gonna do is I drew one inch all the way around the entire parameter and I'm going to cut that out by hand. So, take out this piece down here. This one down here. Oops, oh well, it's going to wrap, so it's not going to hurt that I kind of snagged it a little bit there. So we're going to cut up this line. Now this is the first time I've made this particular project, and what happened was I saw this four years ago, and the reason I know it was four years is because I had just moved, and my printer hadn't been brought over and hooked up yet, and while I was waiting on them to bring stuff over, my grandsons, I was looking at stuff on the computer and I saw this, but I couldn't print it. So I drew myself a sketch when the other day I was looking for some other papers and lo and behold, I found this where I had sketched it. So I thought, cool. I don't think I need to leave that. I don't. So I'm going to cut this box out like we do when we make boxes. I haven't folded it yet, but I'm going to cut this just a little bit farther. There. Get rid of all these pieces. So I don't remember the girl's name who, I guess it was her original design, I'm assuming it was. But I don't know because I couldn't print it and it was it's been so long I completely forgot about it and it's been so long since I saw it that I'm not sure so I'm going to fold these over now this is lightweight cardstock and you can get it at Tamara's store occasionally from time to time I may pull something from my stash like an embellishment or something but 99.9% .9 of what is in this pro project is going to be from Country Craft Creations because that's where I like to get stuff and she ships so fast I'm telling you it's amazing how quick your order comes when you buy from her of course you're free to buy anywhere you want but I'm just telling you what I do and then you can take it from there so I'm going to fold this over some straight edges. Oh, and I got a little excess here I need to take away. That's my one inch line from the bottom. Now you will have a cut list posted for this. It'll be in the description box and it'll also be on my <clears throat> Facebook page, Make Mine a Mini. And I'll put it over there too. This part we need to keep because we're going to wrap it to the bottom. When the box folds, it's going to be like this, so we want this piece to wrap around. So in order to have something to wrap here and here, I'm just going to cut it at an angle. And I'm not going to cut all the way to the chipboard, just close. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. And 
up here just at an angle. So none of my chipboard shows. And then on this part we can actually angle it this way. And then this way. And I'll probably have more to take out once I wrap this. So this will wrap in this way. This will wrap down. Making a corner right there. a little bit of a nub where I can trim out just a hair more. And I don't want to take out too much, just that little nub right there. So that I don't have that little pucker. Let's see what that looks like. better. So it will wrap like that. You still see a little nub right there. I just don't want that little pucker thing. Still not rid of it. on it just a little bit more. I'll take care of it. I'm hoping. Yep, there we go. That took care of it. Now let's check this to make sure it doesn't have any overhang and well. Lay your scissors right alongside it, like you do when you're making an album cover. And the same thing here. I don't think it's going to hang over, but I'll trim it just a hair, just to be sure. Okay. So there's that. Let's trim this excess out right here. Just a little bit of a haircut. And this one needs to be trimmed up. You can see where my score line was. Okay, so there's that one. Now this needs to fold up. At this little corner, we just have to work our way around it. And this one definitely needs to be trimmed up. And this one. And we'll do this 
Still cutting out corners in case I get out of frame where you don't see what I'm doing. Try to make sure I stay in frame all the time. It's a challenge sometimes. <laughs> Okay, so now this is going to wrap over the bottom. I guess I can put these on the inside. It'd probably be better if I do. So let's fold these towards the inside and make sure that they're straight. how our box will go. Might be a good idea to trim these off and wrap them to the inside. Like I said, this is my first time with this one. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. I'll trim these off a little bit and wrap these to the inside. And then this can curl around. I just want to make sure that it's closed up tight. And this can wrap around like this. See which way I like it best. I'm not crazy about that way. Let's try it like this. Wrapping it to the outside. Okay. So let's trim this off a little bit. We don't need all that. We just need enough to wrap to the inside so that when we put our inside piece down, our chipboard doesn't show. Let me get rid of all these little nubbins I've trimmed off here. Okay. need to wrap. I'm trying to think here. I want to put my inside piece down. Um, I was hoping to do it before I wrap it, but I don't think I'm going to be able to. We can trim up this little corner here. Get rid of all the bulk that we can. Still trimming. Mm, that looks pretty good. Okay. So let's take out this. And I did use eighth inch um, score tape on this. And get a hold of it. I always forget I got this little tool here one of the kids gave me. And it does help. Okay, there we go. Got that out of here. Okay, so let's grab the half inch for tape. And we'll 
put some along this edge. that I can get it on, except for those two little tabs that wrap. but these two pieces. And we want our art glitter glue along the perimeter here. in first. These are all flappy days. short side. Some more glitter glue. And this top piece we can fold down. I thought I trimmed that. I trimmed the other side, not this. with your phone folder. And we'll come around to this angled piece.
top over last so we have a nice smooth top edge. Oh, I'm moving my wastebasket. I keep forgetting it's not there by my right hand. Huh? Okay. And last but not least is this top one. And my tape is sticking over the edge and I don't want that. <coughs> Okay, that will be the box bottom. Can you just sit like that? I keep picking up all this land here. I'm going to wrap it to the outside, but we're going to have design paper under there, so that will cover that anyway. Okay. So this will be the box bottom, or front. So when we add the bottom, it will be like this. And it wraps up over and over. What is that? Smoothing it along that score line up against the chipboard. Like that. So it will fold like that and like that. Very good. Let's see what this looks like here. That is fine. We need to put our white cover on the inside, and I cut a piece that is probably bigger than what I need, better than too small, nine and a quarter by nine and three eighths. So it's going to go from here. And it doesn't make any difference if it's a little bit shy at the bottom, as long as it covers the majority of it, because we're going to put design paper on it anyway. So we want to be short of both of those. So you can see, pencil, this is your top edge right here. It's real hard to tell where that is without turning it over. So let me do that. I'm going to get it centered between the two. I'm going to turn it over. And I'm going to draw a light line right here. So that I can cut that out. Sure, you cut on your line. Just 
great as you can possibly could. Okay, I am going to put this down, cut my design paper, and then I'll be back. Okay, see you shortly. Okay, guys, I have the top piece of my box lined and I wrapped these side flaps where I showed you we were going to wrap it to the bottom because this will be covered with design paper and then when we wrap the sides around that will hold this in straight. I think I might need a little white touch up right there. Kind of looks like I do. I think a white gel pen will take care of that. It's just one little spot that kind of shows up where that two papers came together. Yeah, that covers it up. Okay. <clears throat> so the next thing we need to do is to build the back piece of the box. So um, I have your pieces listed separately on the cut sheet. It shows you which is the front of the box and which is the back of the box. So the next thing we're going to do is take the, actually I have two pieces of cardstock and I joined them with um, a little of the art glitter glue just to make one long piece and we're going to take the two and a half by six piece and it goes down first. started. There we go. And I have one inch lines marked here, so I'll get it straight. Please get it straight. There we go. Now on this one I'm going to use, remember on the front part, we used eighth inch score tape. On this, we're going to use quarter inch because we need to actually have a little extra leeway because this is the same. Um, these uh, spines are the same as the other one, and we need a little extra leeway so that it wraps over and around it. So we're going to use quarter inch for that. So we're going to put a piece right here. Put the one and a half inch next. Keep forgetting that dumb tool. What I do with it right there. Piece of score tape. Just tear it. Then we need the large six by eight piece. the 
large part on the back of the box. Another piece of orange. The second one and a half inch spine or gusset or whatever we want to call it. And the last piece of quarter inch. And then we need the six by six and an eighth. Yeah, we have a one inch on each side, and I only need one inch up here. Let me find my ruler. What did I do with my ruler? It's hiding around here somewhere. into everything. Oh, there it is. I knew it was here somewhere. So we need to mark off one inch. And we'll just snip it off with the scissors. And we'll just wrap this like we do an album cover with the exception of this large centerpiece. What we're going to do is we're going to cut between here and between here because what happens is the center of the box sits over this section here. And these wrap around the sides. And then this comes over the front. And this comes up this way. That makes your box. And then you'll have this opening here. So. Let's draw. Just a little bit of a line here. I want to make sure it's straight on both sides. Oh gosh, I lose everything, I tell you. Right here and right here. And then we want one down here. Just trying to kind of get it center ways. It needs to be down just a hair. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, so we're going to snip here. In here, and 
in here. these along the edge of our chipboard. It's kind of hard to roll it like you do with a medium weight because this is so uh, thin that the chipboard tends to bend with it. There's that. Now we're going to roll this one up. Try to hold your chipboard down while you roll this edge over. That way you'll get a nice crisp fold. And we just keep rolling all the way around. And then the last section is right here. We can cut out these little corners like we do on an album cover. Check these two corners while I'm here. Let's trim these up. Let's go. Cut these two corners out. <coughs> and the 
Some, something sticky on my scissors. Oop. There we go. Got some of this junk that accumulates in my way. tape sheets here. Okay. The clutter drives me crazy. <laughs> okay, now back to our half inch. And we'll put that around the parameter like normal. And over here. thingies. I don't need a smear of that on there now. Oh, stuck to my finger. on this end. There we go. So let's give those a burnish. Take our white glue. And we'll put it right. Oops, let me get these. I want those out of there first. Put 
the white glue on the cardstock like always. finger. Make sure that's not hanging over. I'm going to turn it around to the other side. One more to go. Press that into the score tape. want to decorate the inside and once we decorate it then we'll set this right over there and it will stick to the score tape down there and this will wrap up over like that and that will make your box and then we can decorate the outside all right let me cut some papers for this for the inside and I'll be back Okay, I have to share with you all my goof up, but at least it will help you know not to do it to your own. So these are pieces I have cut for the inside of the lid, but I don't want to put them down yet till I get my magnet in place. And then I have a piece cut for the bottom as well, but I need to put my magnets on. What I did was, I showed you how this sits in here. I should have cut this here and folded it under before I put my blue paper down but I didn't but there's always a way to fix things so I had a scrap left of this paper that was long and narrow so I trimmed it down into two 5 8 inch strips and I put it on a 3 quarter inch strip of white and I'm going to glue it in here so it looks like it was intentional 
it won't completely go to the bottom. It wasn't long enough that it's not going to show once this is all closed up or the box is put on there. So what I have to do is trim this up just a little bit so I can glue it inside and then put this over the top. So let me put a little mark here. And I want to trim it just a little bit less than that. Get the scissors and I'll just cut it off with my scissors. But you know, we all make mistakes from time to time. Or goof ups. But if you just think about it, there's usually a way to fix it. Make sure this is going to cover it. Yes, that'll be fine. Okay, so I'm going to glue that down. Nobody will be wiser, but those of us that saw it. So I'm going to put some hard glitter glue on the underside of this little flap. And I'm going to press this into place. It's pretty close to the bottom. It's not far off. But like I said, once it's closed up, nobody's going to be the wiser. Except for those of us that know what I did. <laughs> those things happen sometimes. So this is going to go up at the top. Just right along that edge. Just like that. <coughs> and then I have one for the other side, so it looks like it was intended to be that way. shows a little bit on the edge. It doesn't matter because we're going to set our box bottom in there. Now, when we put this down, you'll feel it kind of drop into that little groove there at the bottom and on both sides it'll push right in and I will decorate this later. Okay, so what we need to do to get this into place is to put a little glue down here. across the bottom and down this side and we're going to sit this in here and like so make sure it's up there tight against that bottom I'm going to do just a little snip right here on this edge just to make sure I don't have any overhang. And I have a little bit at the bottom so I'm going to trim it too.
and I'm not going to come out of there. Okay, so now we're going to put glue on this flap. side. I'm sure we keep this taut. And we'll do the same thing to the other side. French. Let's do this one. <coughs> we'll wrap this one over. Oops. Once we do these, this will wrap up this way and flap over the top. And this will come down like that. This kind of sticks out a little bit. Is where our magnets will go. I'm not crazy about this right here. I don't think it should do that. Magnets look a bit better. Okay, so now is when we place our magnets. Come on, these things are so hard to get out. I think I might use two to make sure it's gonna not wiggle on me. to be down from the bottom, or from the top edge of the bottom. Make sure how much my overlap is. Careful when I put 
that together. But I do wish this was. There, that's better. Okay, so let's. These magnets in place. That's close to the edge, isn't it? Well, I have to be real creative with those, huh? Okay, well, I'll get her done one way or the other. Can get them off real quick for their hard and fast on there. I'm thinking what I'm going to do is maybe place one magnet under here. Place one magnet under this pocket. Because I just didn't like where it was. Oh. It stuck to me. I'm going to push this corner in to suit myself. down. And I will put the magnet up here. There's the other one right there. Let's see if that'll work. No, quit. It's not staying in place. Let's get a piece of card stuck in there. Down and put this there. <coughs> I think that's what I'll do. Make that be my connection point. <coughs> Put these over here for now. I think that's what I'll do.
Auckland. And that's going to be where the magnet goes. So that's the game plan for the box. And then we'll make tags, cards, um, any kind of embellishments you want to go inside the box. And the ribbons will hang out the side. Alright, so I will be back after I paper the outside and show you what I've done. I'm just trying to save time on this video because my last one was so darn long. It was like 2 hours and 45 minutes or something like that. It was just really, really long. But it had so much detail and um, things geared for, especially if um, someone was watching and wanted to remake it that was fairly new to crafting, then it gave them the answers that they, they might need. And I wanted to, you know, keep in mind people that are just starting out because we all have our first project at one time or another. So, alright, that's it for right now, guys. I'll cut out some more papers, and I'll be back, and we'll make some inserts together. Alright?